I built the most insane gaming setup for the Xbox Series X and PS5 with a massive 77 inch 4K HDR TV and surround sound, transforming the living room from this to this. But it wasn't that straightforward. First, we needed to move everything out of the room. Currently, the TV is a super old 4K 65 inch Samsung display from 2014. It does not have any HDR support, the smart TV apps are super slow, and the maximum resolution is 4K 30 hertz, which is no good for our HDMI 2.1 next generation consoles that can go up to 4K 120Hz. There is also a bunch of outdated tech such as old 1080p 3D Blu-ray players from like 2008, which our Xbox Series X will be replacing as that has a much better 4K Blu-ray drive. The new TV is the LG C1 77 inch 4K HDR OLED TV. This was over £1,300 cheaper than the latest LG C2 model for 2022. There are a few trade offs for this saving. The display is not as bright as the LG C2, it's a very marginal difference, and the processor for WebOS is slightly slower on paper, but in the real world, no one's gonna know. However, one major benefit of the C1 over the C2 is definitely the build quality. The new LG C2 has a horrible plastic build construction, which I discussed in my full review video. It makes the TV look very cheap, but with the LG C1 from 2021, it does still have that nice glass looking back and it feels very high end and justifies the price. In an attempt to try and clean up this setup, we are going to be wall mounting this display. Obviously, this is quite a large and heavy TV, so it does require quite a hefty wall mounting system. I picked up this exact one from Amazon. It was a reasonable price and the build quality is fantastic. The only thing that sucked was the instructions. Everything you need is provided in the box, including all of the screws for mounting the TV bracket, as well as the bolts for going into your wall. I will provide links to everything that you need to mount a TV onto your wall, as you'll be surprised by how many tools you actually require. Now, a pro tip if you're drilling into your wall is to put a little bit of sellotape onto your drill bits. If you take the screw or roll plug that you're going to be putting into the wall and use the tape as a marker to ensure that you drill far enough into the wall and you don't go too far or go too short, this way you can be very accurate and quite quick during the drilling process. The biggest upgrade for this setup is definitely the audio. Currently we have this old Samsung soundbar that's easily 10 years old and the subwoofer has not been connecting via Bluetooth for the past 12 months. So it sounds worse and thinner than the internal speakers, but we are upgrading to a Sonus system. This is the new Sonus Arc. It has Dolby Atmos support and is very sleek and modern with its minimalistic look. But to take it to the next level, we have the Sonus Sub, adding the most insane bass performance. This thing rocks the house and also looks really good. Both the Arc and the Sub are going to be mounted to the walls using some Sonus speaker brackets that I found on Amazon. These were all very easy to fit and achieved a nice neat aesthetic, removing the need for a TV stand and also having the Sub cluttering up the floor. In addition to this, I've also added two Sonus ones as surround rear speakers and they're mounted to the corners of the room and we went for white so they blended into the walls a little bit better. Now that everything has been built, it's time to set up the gaming consoles. For the consoles, we have an Xbox Series X and also a PlayStation 5 All Digital Edition. Now I can see the PlayStation being fantastic on this setup, especially with the surround sound. The story games from Sony should be very immersive and all have fantastic HDR support. Now one of my favorite things about the LG OLED TVs is the fact that they are some of the very few displays to support every single format on the Xbox. So you can play in Dolby Vision at 120 hertz which a lot of 4K HDR televisions do not support at this current time. And in addition to this, you do have variable refresh rate support, both with AMD FreeSync and also NVIDIA G-Sync, making this one of the best gaming displays that you can buy. Now, to take things to the next level, I will be using a few different accessories. I have gone ahead and expanded the internal storage on the Xbox Series X with a one terabyte Seagate expansion card. This is fantastic for getting the most out of Xbox Game Pass. And I also have an external SSD for some past generation games from the Xbox One X and Xbox One. And for the PS5, I also have this five terabyte external hard drive, which has been fantastic with the new version of PlayStation Plus. Obviously, PlayStation Plus has its new tiers and it's now very similar to Xbox Game Pass. You get tons of games for a monthly subscription. So I can install all of these onto the external hard drive, especially from the PS4 generation, and then transfer them over for the PS5 if it's a next gen title. For more competitive gameplay sessions, especially first person shooters, I do have the Xbox Series Elite 2 controller, and this is the Halo Infinite Special Edition. This 
this thing looks unbelievable and it's by far the coolest controller I have ever owned. And when you combine it with this Master Chief controller stand that I found on Amazon, it really does complete the look. Although my intentions are to use this gaming setup primarily for single player games to experience that surround sound and subwoofer, on the rare occasion that I am playing with some friends on multiplayer, I do have my Arctis 3 Steel Series gaming headset. This thing is very affordable and easy to use because it is wired so you don't need to worry about connecting it via Bluetooth and having it charged for your next play session. But I may upgrade and change this to something else in the future because if you have quite a small head, even on the lowest setting, I'm not too happy with the way this fits because it is a little bit loose and it moves around which then causes my glasses to move while I'm gaming. So I'm constantly pushing my glasses back up and adjusting my headset so it's quite distracting. Comment down below what you would rate this gaming setup out of 10 and if you enjoyed the video, give it a like and also consider subscribing to the channel. But if you want to see a more affordable gaming setup, you should check out this video next where we build a dream Xbox Series S gaming setup.